When a movie wins this amount of awards and has these types of reviews, you would think that it would be watched by anyone, right? Well, you'd be wrong. And the movie I'm talking about is Wolfwalkers, probably one of the best animated films of the 21st century. And for some reason, it was a huge dud at the box office. Why? We'll get into that. But most importantly, stick around and let me tell you why I think this movie stands head and shoulders above most Disney, Pixar, and Studio Ghibli masterpieces. That's blasphemy. Let's get into it. Let's set the scene. Wolfwalkers is a movie set in 1950s Ireland in a town called Kilkenny, which is a sick name, by the way. <laughs> Centered around a little girl called Robin who moved there from England with her hunter, the dad. They were summoned to the town by the Lord Protector, another way of saying dictator, to rid the forest of wolves. Let's just say some magic things go on in that forest because of wolf walkers, which are magical beings that turn into wolves at night. Robin ends up meeting one of them. Some things happen that I'm not gonna tell you. That's the gist of it. And, and it's a gorgeous story, a story that has its roots in Irish folk art and traditions that are as old as time. There are funny moments, heart-wrenching moments, moments where I teared up, which no good movie goes without. The originality of it as well, staying true to the source material, the casting of Irish voice actors, they're details, but they're important details nonetheless that add to the vibe and that feeling of, honestly, nostalgia that the movie sort of gives you, even if you've never watched it. Speaking of the vibe, I couldn't believe my eyes when we press play. I've seen a lot of animation movies in my life, and few times am I genuinely surprised and taken aback by something that I'm watching. This was one of those times. From the beginning of the movie, you're hit with a completely different animation style, which combines 2D hand-drawn animation with a unique visual approach. And we all know how I feel about 2D hand-drawn animation. <laughs> the film's aesthetic is a mesmerizing blend of intricate swirling patterns and vibrant colors that bring the landscapes of Kilkenny to life. The attention to detail as well is just crazy. Every frame is such a pristine work of art, reflecting the studio's commitment to, to craftsmanship. The directors actually apparently took inspiration from The Tale of Princess Kaguya and 101 Dalmatians for their rough, expressive animation. And you can tell by how a lot of the rough lines from the sketches are included in the movie, which I think is such a cool design choice. I, I honestly think that more animation movies should try that. A very awesome part of the animation is the difference between the town and everyone in it and the forest and everyone in it. They purposefully made the animation of town people as more blocky and rigid to signify cells, cages. So basically the lack of freedom in the town. Whereas the forest is more flowy and smooth pencil strokes, everything is rounded off to signify, of course, the freedom that living in the forest entails. And it's this dichotomy that is so beautifully portrayed in the animation of this movie, and I love. Beyond its visual, visual, beyond its visual charm, though, Wolfwalkers delves into some pretty deep themes. Themes of friendship, acceptance, the interconnectedness of humanity with nature. The relationship between Robin and Mabe is at the heart of the narrative, portraying a powerful bond that's supposed to sort of transcend societal norms and explores the idea of empathy for the other. Because Robin is technically not allowed to go into the forest, and she still befriends this wolf walker. The film also raises environmental concerns, showing the consequences of human interference with the natural world. This leads us to a point that I was blown away by in the movie, and that's the voice acting and script. The voice acting in Wolfwalkers is fucking phenomenal. With Anuk Nifsi and Eva Whitaker, I hope I didn't butcher those names, <laughs> delivering performances that breathe life into their characters. The chemistry, especially between the two leads, is palpable, making the emotional impact of the narrative hit so much harder. I think the best performance here though, and this might be a hot take, is actually from Robin's father, Sean Bean who adds so much depth to the movie with his portrayal of a parent torn between duty and the love for his daughter. Like, you can really hear the pain and struggle in his voice. Honestly, his delivery in the movie is stellar. I, I loved it. Like, it just, 
There's something about it. He really portrays that suffering so well and that paternal love. And all the voice actors are helped by a really great script, in my opinion. Let me drop some gems here and there. Like when Robin's father is worried about her and her conviction to, to be a hunter, telling her, that's why I must be afraid for you, because she's so fearless. I think that's a beautiful line. Him telling Robin that work is prayer, showing us his belief in the connection between religion and working day in, day out, which again is very true to the times. Or how Mabe always refers to Robin as Townie and tells her, smell you later, Townie, since she has such a distinct town smell to Mabe. It's just lines like these that make the conversation so unique and genuine to the characters. And nowadays with so many movies that seem to have cookie cutter scripts, it's just a welcome, welcome sight. <laughs> Needless to say, I was flabbergasted by how good this movie is. Yeah, flabbergasted. But even more so about how few people have watched it. And so I did some digging to see why that was the case. I mean, this movie's way too good to not be mainstream. And that's where I saw the first hiccup, which was that it was released in cinemas only in select countries, and this was in late 2020. <laughs> if you guys remember what happened in late 2020, a little thing called COVID. So cinemas weren't exactly popping, which meant that it only grossed 238,000 at the global box office while costing nearly $10 million to produce. That's bullshit, you know? You know what movies made more than that in 2023? Oh, just Magic Mike's Last Dance, Meg 2, The Pope's Exorcist, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, made more than Wolfwalkers. How? Who's watching a horror movie about Winnie the Pooh? Like, how does the world make sense? I don't know what to tell you, honestly. I'm lost for words. I don't get it. Anyway, another reason was that the movie aired on Apple TV, which is one of the least used streaming sites. Exactly 10th in 2022, below even Paramount. Plus. So, yeah, unfortunately it was destined to fail, quote unquote, in a way because of the botched release and unforeseen circumstances. Hence this video, a way for me to do my part in getting this movie more attention and traction. If you're subscribed to the channel, if you liked this video, or even if you just like movies in general, please watch this one. Trust me when I say it'll be an unforgettable experience. Anyway guys, that's it from me. Thanks a ton for watching all the way through. Like the video if you liked it. Comment down below. I always respond to all your comments. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one.